I would like to know if you guys think that race is an issue in the U.S. Raging issue, yes. <laughs> Does anybody think that it's not an issue? Well, I think it's an issue every single day. Every single day I'm worried about my daughter. Every single day I'm wondering how people are perceiving me. Every single day I wonder, you know, it's, it, race is kind of like, it's like you, sometimes with interactions with people, you can't prove that it's because of your race, but you, you, in your heart, you feel like it is. And so you're constantly trying to battle that and negotiate it as you go and try to fulfill your dreams and try to get your goals met every day, every minute, it is an issue. Having the immigrant parents growing up, I didn't really realize what, how, teachers, you know, different adults in, you know, stores and various places would kind of judge and just assume and think less of my parents or family due to how they speak. Right. One and of the things that comes to mind uh, currently is the, uh, the situation at the border with ICE detaining people who are trying to get some asylum. And, and separating children from parents and giving them medications without their, without their parents' consent and not keeping track of where these kids are going in foster care. That, to me, if, this, if it was Germany or Canada or, or uh, basically an Anglo country that was trying to do that, this would not happen. But because their skin is brown, it's happening. So it's unfortunate, but it's so blatant. And I don't, I don't really, have tolerance, and I don't really understand people who don't get um, what's going on in uh, as far as that situation goes. Like the first week I came here, I got a ticket because I was just still learning, like how to like drive the car, respect the rules. So I was stopped by a police, like a white police guy, and he I didn't know that you're not supposed to get out of the car. So I got out of the car and I knocked at the police door uh, window, and he screamed at me saying like go back to your car and thankfully he didn't do anything like really back to me but when he approached me he asked me oh no wonder why you acting like that you came from Colombia nobody from your country respect rules over here and they so always have that the drug car like throwing at me oh you're from Colombia so the first thing that they said oh that's the country where Pablo Escobar is that's like do you have any cocaine do you have uh, any drugs with you uh, are you a prostitute and I say, well, like, I don't know why you guys like, hear on TV or on the news, but I just came here to learn the language and also to just like to continue with my education. So I don't know like why uh, you have to make those comments toward me, but I am really proud and I don't have to be offended by your comments. So I used to say, tell people like that. And then by the way, like Colombia is just not only drugs and prostitution. We have um, a diversity there that is like, we're like a country like formed with people from so many different parts of the world. We have uh, the blacks that came from Africa. We have the Lebanese, we have the Jewish, we had the German. So I used to tell people, this is not what you think of Colombia. We have the Amazon jungle, we have river, we have biodiversity, we have the best emerald in the world. We have coffee, we have things to offer. It's not just drugs and prostitution. Mm -hmm. And just so to add to that comment, like, what are you? I would get that all the time too. And I want to say this because and whoever's watching, when you say, Oh, you don't you don't look like a Mexican girl. You you're pretty for a Mexican girl. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like lighter complexion, but like does that mean you think Hispanic or Latino women are ugly because they have darker darker complexions, different hair, you know, types and things like that. So that's why what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? And it's not a compliment when you say those things either. Mm -hmm. And it was such a hassle for me because when I went to the advisor, she literally look, looked at me and he was like, yeah, you can never really do that. And I knew I could because I have a French friend that just did it. And the only reason I knew I could do it is because she did it and they convalidated the class for her and it was a bliss. What that meant for me that I needed to speak with the dean of the school and it was a hassle for about a month in order for me to be able to take that class and for them to allow me to take other classes and bring the credit in. So obviously 
as with everything in life, I'm here thinking like, it cannot just be because of my race. But then I think again and I'm like, why? Because somebody else did the exact same thing that I'm asking for and he didn't look like it was such a hassle. And one night my sister was walking to our house from that parking lot and there is this lady in her car and she saw her walking and my sister had her hood on and she was just like following her and she, my sister turned around and she's like, do you even live here? And my sister's like, um, yeah. And she's like, well, which, which house do you live in? Because I've never seen you around here before. And there's people breaking into our cars. And um, I, I can guess you know why this is a little suspicious. And, and all I said was, just do it. And that's all I said. He said he was going to do something. I said, just do it. And he was like, he paused what he was doing. He was like, don't tell me you're one of those people who supports uh, the kneeling during the national anthem on the football field homie what it was more of like trying to be funny about it and this was my boss and at first it was kind of funny like i i have dark humor like dry humor i mean and so i mean we make fun of each other and whatnot but he would start to like really push it over and over again where we would go to a, a restaurant like a mexican restaurant and be like oh myra is this the kind your mom makes is this the is this authentic? Like, oh, what's that one drink that, oh, I love it. It's the horchata. Or he would say it's so chopped up on purpose to try to be funny about it. And like, uh, talk about lengua tacos and like, and I'd be like, yeah, I love lengua tacos. But he would make a joke out of it. Like, oh, you know, my other employees, oh, do you guys want to try some? And they would be like, oh, no. And then he would do it over and over again to try to be funny about it. Or even like say like, oh, does, you know, maybe your mom have like a food truck or want to do like a food truck and like sell her food and like those kind of aggressions where I would just be, I like, I got to the point where I would ignore him. Like he would be talking to me and I would just, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't look at that point. I stopped responding. I stopped laughing about it. And then he stopped. It was those tiny little things that after a while it pissed me off. I was like, that's, you're just kind of judging and think it's a joke. Right. Like, yeah, my, my mom cooks bomb to, doesn't mean you're going to say, oh, does she have a food truck? She have a restaurant? Is she, you know? Right. Why are you assuming that uh, mom wants to have a food truck? Like, Because if your mom was white and threw down in the kitchen, he wouldn't ask if she had a food truck. And and I was working in aviation sales. I, I was working in, in Atlanta area. So I was like one of the... Uh, the minorities in in that company so it happened that every time that a police officer or like a police car passed by the the office I have this white guy that used to tell me hey Katia go hide in the warehouse that they're coming for you they're going to they're coming to deport you so and I used to tell him I said well if they're going to deport me they have to get the Canadians ladies that work here too because they're foreigner. He said, no, no, but you're Mexican. So uh, they're just coming here because maybe you don't have the papers. And, and so then, I'm asking you guys, the people who are not Mexican on this call, can you guys confirm that that's like actually a thing in Latin America, like in Latin American communities? Hell yes, that shit is a thing. And I see it all the fucking time. Mexicans have been getting shitted on by the Latin community like crazy, but just blanketed Mexicans get shit on by all the other Hispanics just like you're saying how people don't want to be black any dark person you're getting at the worst no matter where you're from because nobody wants to be dark you know I don't know why people shit on Mexicans I don't know why Hispanics don't want to be Mexican or whatever but and then if you even if you are it's like okay well I'm Dominican but at least I'm not dark or yeah but my hair is isn't super curly or isn't nappy or whatever the fuck they'll say like even growing up um with my sisters because i have four older sisters two of them because we would always like roast each other and they'd be like whatever crystal you look like you're a mexican and that was like an insult you know even in the novelas they portray mexicans it's like they they are hiding what so many Mexicans look like under what they perceive to be beautiful. Like there's nobody that's really dark. There's nobody who looks like the Taino Indian. I was raised knowing it's better to be Dominican than it is to be Mexican. It's better to be Puerto Rican. It's better to be 
um, Ar Argentinian, whatever, than it is to be Mexican. But I, I don't get it. Kind of like I don't get why it's better to be anything but black, you know? Is I used to be a stripper, and it's not a secret. I don't care. And when I was, one of my cl close friends in the club, she was black, dark-skinned black girl. She would tell me, like, you know, if you want to make more money, don't wear your hoop earrings. You need to wear stud earrings. Like, try to wear more, like, lace. Basically, adjust myself to what would be more, like, white-friendly or what these older white men would be looking for. Things like that. And what's crazy is I could understand in maybe a different environment. I'm just, it's like, I'm out here shaking ass and I still got a fucking accommodate to these white people like are you kidding me in the club though that well i have a 19 year old she'll be 20 in august and we talk about race all the time obviously because she is on all the platforms she sees all of the uh the killings of brown and black bodies and it's something that we have to talk about um just recently she started skateboarding and we have a skate park uh it's not too far from our house and she and her friend were going there in the mornings, um, her friend was from Australia, but she has since gone and made it back home. But I noticed that once the friend was now not able to go with my daughter to the skate park, I started to get really panicked. And so uh, we talk about it all the time. It's a continual thing. And I think there is no option for us because I, I need her to be prepared. You know, it's unfortunate and it makes me sad <laughs> that I have to prepare her for this. But I also think that I, you know, we just don't have a choice. We have to have those conversations and we just kind of console each other, you know, and, um, and that I think, again, going back to my family, that is what kind of makes it hard is, you know, they don't quite understand exactly how this impacts us and, and the fear that it, that it drums up. So. But I, the way I think it fades within my culture and the people that I see here is that everybody kind of stays in their own lane, if you will, and they are very much afraid, I feel like, to go and get more and explore more things because more often than not, I see that Dominicans stick with Dominicans and it's not necessarily because that's natural, but it's also because they're afraid of exploring outside of their of, of the boundaries because being afraid of being targeted, being profiled, being uh, told things that they don't want to deal with. And my sister and I, has, since we came here, we wanted to just go everywhere. We didn't see race too much, but we even sometimes go to a restaurant. She asked for like pancetta because she wanted to do a carbonara. And then the first thing that they asked her is like, oh, the Italian pork? I'm like, if she asks you for that, she probably knows what she's asking for. And I think I went to a restaurant the other day and I also ordered something. I know what I'm ordering. I literally know what I'm ordering, but I think the waiter felt the necessity to describe to me, define what I was ordering. And it's just these kinds of things that I, that I feel like in my culture, people tend to just be friends with Dominicans sometimes and only hang out with ourselves. And it's not because of anything else but being afraid to be exposed to this kind of treatment they don't say they're afraid but they also don't, don't they kind of stay in their own lane if you will learning so my mom would tell us tell the kids like you know always get with a partner who you think is going to advance your children in their looks make their, make your children more beautiful so that they don't have to have a hard life so I translate that as, okay, well, you're dark, so you get with somebody who is light so that you can lighten your children so you feel like they will not have as hard of a life as you have. So it's crazy. It's like, that's the the embedded root. It's like a level of safety. Like, okay. Yeah, I, I think, oh my God, like I can identify so much because it feels like being a colored person, you almost have to read your resume just so people can like, accept you or see you better like for all those people out there who make comments of race being non-existent in 2020 and everyone's past that and it just doesn't exist and everything is not about race are you sure that was a race thing that just happened 
<laughs> what do you guys have to say to those people? Just stop talking. <laughs> Just stop talking. Seriously. Like you you don't if you don't get it, then educate yourself and shut up. Like that's all I gotta say. Like just you don't have a right to say anything about it if you don't know anything about it. So that's all I gotta say. I would say that, you know, someone who says that has the luxury of thinking that race doesn't matter. They don't have to think about uh, the things that we think about my daughter going to the skate park or not getting stopped by a policeman or uh, they just have the luxury of, of their skin not being an issue for them. And I would have to say, if you want to be, if you, th this country is going forward and things are changing and it is because of your generation, I am convinced. Um, and I, I'm excited about it. But I think that people are going with th that idea, they're just going to be left behind and in the dark. I hate when people say they don't see color and that shit doesn't exist. First of all, bitch, shut the fuck up. Second of all, yes, you fucking do. Because don't tell me that the makeup industry isn't flourishing with funds based on color and complexion. You don't go to get one fucking foundation. You match your color. So you see that shit. You know it fucking exists. So I don't even have a lot to say on that. When people say that shit, I think they are deliberately being racist. I wanted to say a word that's a little bit lighter than racist, but no, it's just racist. I think they're deliberately um, being racist and they're using color to blanket the problems. You see the problem. So when you're saying there's no color, you're trying to say there's no problem with how people of color are being treated. So if anybody thinks that, all I gotta say is fuck you. <laughs> Ditto on that. Honestly, I think it's a joke when people say their reasoning why they think it's Oh, like why things are happening or whatnot, even coming from people that we knew in school. Um, don't tell me, oh, you miss my mom's cooking. Oh, you love this and that, all the parties, this and that. And then post all that shit when you don't even have one clue to what their life was like. You haven't had one struggle. I mean, the bravery to do what my family has done, not considering their side of the story what they've been through not listening not caring to listen not educating yourself and then having the mouth to just blah blah you know just all this stuff constant 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 and you don't know anything you're not aware you're not willing to relate to anybody you just focus about what you want to say and whatnot and you know what like cynthia said it is going to be changing by what was it 2060 i saw statistics there's going to be over 110 million hispanic latinos alone in the u.s right now we're at what 60 million and you think that number is going to go down no and with all the other races and immigrants coming uh it's going to explode so sit down for the ride get used to it i mean if you if anyone ever wants to come and talk to myself or my family about their life and maybe you can get some insight on it then go for it but all the other shit you're saying is bullshit honestly open your eyes and your mind to it what i would say is that you don't know what you don't know and everybody has their own experience so the fact that you have not experienced racism or something because of how you look doesn't give you the right to say it doesn't exist you can only learn and listen i would say listen but know that for the simple fact of how i look i may have an entire different experience some people looked at me and they have a thousand assumptions and now that's my experience even with the same people so i would say listen to people listen to what they have to say listen to their experience and don't invalidate people's experience if somebody's saying i experience racism they are saying it because of their experience and nobody should invalidate somebody else's experience just because they didn't went through it. I agree. My answer to, is it about race or is it non-existent is, I just feel like those statements are, I don't know, almost strategic from a white perspective. If I can deny that race exists, I don't have to go back and atone for the things that ancestors have done because some white people take the point of view of well i didn't do it 
I just was able to benefit from the things that have happened. However, when you ask questions like, is that really a race thing? Or I don't think that's race or race doesn't exist. I don't see color. This is a colorblind society. That's allowing you to continue to uphold the systems that your ancestors put in place to keep other people oppressed. And so I just feel like the person who is saying that is strategically doing a chess move of like making sure things stay the way that they are, upholding the system of racism. Uh, I would say that um, they using that as an excuse that, oh, I don't see color. Yes, you do see color. Yes, you do know about your white privilege or whatever, right? So I, the first thing I said, like, just educate yourself. I experienced to be married to a white guy, and I experienced myself, like, being a Latina married to a white guy. I was experiencing racism because in the South, when they see a mixed couple, it's always like something. You always get the very loo. You don't always get the same treatment. Just even going to a restaurant, the waitress used to acknowledge my white ex-husband, but not me. So like I was non-existent. So that is a problem right there. You do see color because I am different that you don't gonna offer me the same kind of service. So I would tell people that are there and listening to educate themselves, educate not only about the black history, educate about like a Latin American history. I know before saying something, just educate yourself. Like know that we can speak uh, Spanish, but we all different. We all come from different regions that have different kind of like cultural backgrounds. Try to find if you have a friend that happens to be a Latino, like just go ask them question. Hey, how did you grow up? Like did you experience racism in your country? Like what would you say if I call you for a certain race that I know yours? So like how would you feel? And if you don't know uh, nothing, just be quiet. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you guys for being here with me. Thank you.